welcome to this week's edition of Faith and Friends. Jennifer and Zach are on assignment. <laughs> we'll hear from them shortly, but until then, it's Mark, myself, you, our friends, as we say goodbye to the month of June, and hello July. Yeah, Excited about fireworks. And good to get into July as, you know, the summer's starting to uh, pick up steam and are starting to feel like it's summer yeah. outside, and yeah. good to uh, get the, the season going. We'll start this new month of July with Scripture, you were halfway through the 2014 year, and maybe you're looking back at the first six months and saying, this just did not go how it was planned. Well, it's never too late. God can make things new. Looking forward instead of looking behind, and here's some scripture to help you do just that. It comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hmm. Great opportunities there to see what God has planned for the future and to maybe take some time to refresh during these summer months and see, okay, how am I going to attack this second half of the year? We encourage you to take some time to get away and do that. And we don't think <laughs> that Jennifer and Zach are in a desert, but we do know they're traveling to various locations. Jennifer Beck, Zach Bowers, out to find adventure and inspiration. And we start this week's Faith and Friends with them on the road in eastern Ohio. Thanks, guys. Well, Zach and I actually are the Christian Home Educators of Ohio Conference in Akron, where I have been asked to come as a speaker. We're in the exhibit hall right now, which is filled with educational products, all kinds of things as well. But you know what? We had to come all the way to Akron to find Faith Financial Services, which actually is located in Bluffton. Kathy Dunlap is here with me. Kathy, why do you think it's important to come to an educational conference like this and talk about finances? Sure. Well, I have homeschooled my own children for Ever, since the beginning and Gary Reese who is our financial advisor has also done that and so we have a passion for homeschooling first of all but it is a great avenue a great place the conference to meet people who are like-minded and who are motivated to operate according to their beliefs and so for us we um, we practice and help people understand biblically responsible investing which is a way of aligning your investments with your values and we find the homeschooling community to be really open and receptive to that because they want to invest in the same way they educate, in the same way they live, and so it's a good fit for us. I think it's a really important concept to be thinking about where our invested money is going, and I notice you have a sign right over here that says, is your IRA supporting abortion? I would imagine some of our viewers look at that and go, hmm, I don't know, how do you even find out? Right, and the hmm question is so huge because we have our investments in a variety of places and we have no idea what really they're supporting, what really they're invested in. And so a, a good part of our ministry and business model is to um, screen people's investments and be able to look through a, a software model and through hands-on investigation, be able to know what businesses are behind the investments and what those businesses are involved in at a corporate level for advertising, for their human resource policy, for you know who they're targeting their, their products and, and things too. And so you know people can get a report. I'm actually holding a paper that shows a report that you can have done on your investments. And can show you how what percent is invested in abortion, what percent is invested in pornography, or or the home, uh, the same sex political agenda, or other things that we wouldn't intentionally support ourselves, and yet our our investments may in fact be supporting those things. So if people have questions on that, they can call Faith Financial Services, and you guys will set up an appointment with them and, and take a look at, at at their investments. Yeah, our business is Faith Investment Services, and we're on the web at myfaith investments.com easiest place to start sorry I kept calling you faith financial I just keep thinking money 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 it's important to invest our money in the proper way correct it is, it is. thank you very much Kathy for taking some time with talking to us and thank you and Gary as well for your devotion to Christ through things like money all right. Well, we are going to continue moving down the aisle here at the convention and Coming up next, I'm going to pass things off to Zach, who has a very interesting interview with the keynote speaker here at this convention. Steve Scheibner would have been on one of the 9-11 flights had things not changed for his schedule. Zach? 
Well, thank you, Jennifer. That's right. I'm just down the hallway here in front of the Character Health booth, which we'll talk about in just a moment with our keynote speakers, Steve and Megan Scheibner. And first, before we do get to Character Health, Steve, you've got an incredible story right. and a background story that we did just mention um, regarding 9-11, don't you? Right. I was originally scheduled to be the co-pilot on the first airplane that was hijacked on September 11th, and that was American Airlines Flight 11. It was the first one that departed out of Boston. And uh, over the years, I'm still a pilot with American Airlines, but I was a reserve pilot. And uh, that flight had no co-pilot assigned to it the day before. And so at 3 o'clock on the 10th of September, uh, crew scheduling at American Airlines would go and, and they would assign a, a, the final pilot to that trip. And I was the only guy available to fill in that day. And so the computer automatically assigned my name at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the 10th. And then a senior pilot to me, a guy by the name of Tom McGinnis, uh, Tom was celebrating his 42nd birthday on the 10th of September with his wife and his children. Uh, Tom went, ran over to the computer about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, logged in to see if there was any available flying for the next day. It was kind of an afterthought for him. And uh, he saw my name assigned, but he saw a little code next to it that said they hadn't called to confirm it yet. And he called down to Dallas real fast and said, hey, is it too late for me to grab that trip? And they said, no. And he said, well, let me talk to my wife. He talked to his wife, called back, and uh, they erased my name from the trip, and they put Tom's on it, and the, the rest is history. Yeah. So at what point did you realize that, you know, that flight was the one that you could have been more assigned to? Well, it was later on on the, on the 11th, because like everybody else, I was watching September 11th unfold on the TV. And later on that evening, about, about 7 o'clock at night on the 11th, I went back to the computer, because I, I thought, I probably know the, the crews that were on those flights. They're all based in Boston. And... So I logged in like I did the day before, where my name had been assigned to the flight. And this time, when the screen came up in front of me, where my name had been 24 hours prior to that, now there was no names at all. They had all been scrubbed off the flight. And all it said was sequence failed continuity, which at the, at the airlines means that the flight didn't make it to its destination. And that's a huge understatement. But when I saw the screen visually, it occurred to me that, that that's the flight I had packed my bags for and that somebody else had you know, taken my place. It's really incredible to be seconds away, really, from yeah. being confirmed for that site. So, you, know, you, you, you do have a book regarding kind of the story from your point of view, is that right? We do. It was uh, in 2010, uh, 2011, right. uh, a film came out, In My Seat, that's a 15-minute documentary that shares our story with interviews of the two of us. And after the film came out, people began to email us saying, you know, who are you people? And, uh, and why do you do what you do? And so we were contacted by a literary agent who asked me to write the book. And it, it really is the story of how God takes an unsaved young man, which Steve was, and, and an unsaved girl and brings them together and, and um, puts oil in their lamp. And, and the catalyst that was September 11th that really has started our ministry and opened up doors around the, um, well, around the United States and around the world at this point. Well, the 9-11 the story, just a, a small bit of your backstory. You guys have been a, involved in church planting, I understand, and, and different ministry aspects there. And now you've moved into a new venture, Character Health. Tell us a little bit about that. Right. Well, our mission at Character Health, we really believe that the American family is in crisis in a lot of ways. I mean, all you have to do is go to the local restaurant to see that the behavior issues abound, right? Yeah. And so, you know, on September 11, 2001, we were very passionate about the Scheibners and our family. Now we're really passionate about the American family and really reaching out to the American family with discipleship materials and, and a, a way for parents to be able to raise their children in a 21st century that makes sense, that raises the standard. And so we've created this thing called the Nine Practices of the Proactive Parent. It's available on DVD. We've got lots of other resources that come alongside that main course. We travel to all sorts of conferences and conventions teaching you know, live uh, audiences as well. But we've been literally all around the world yeah. Um, you know, teaching parents is tens of thousands now we've been in front of uh, to help parents get equipped, really to equip parents, I guess, to train a new generation of courageous, Christ-like, what we call character-healthy leaders. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about. At the end of the day, everybody loves their kids and they want the best for them. And we like to come alongside and help parents in that venture. Oh, great. And if I'm a parent out there, what does that look like as far as the course and how can they find out more information? Right. 
we use the word Christ-like, uh, it's kind of a nebulous term. And so we try to define that. It's, it's the character that Christ had. So it's the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. It's compassion, it's humility, it's courage, honor, commitment. And how do we teach those things to our kids? So the main event is really the, the video course, which is a 10-week small group study. And then we have books and other DVDs that come alongside. We want to disciple parents because we believe that as Christians, we are to disciple our children, and then they are to go out and disciple others. And we have this treasure that we can pass on to others. And so that's our desire, is to pass on the treasure through the teaching of Character Health. Is there a website or some place that they can find more information? Right, yeah, it's just the name characterhealth.com, so it's pretty yeah. easy. All you gotta do is be able to spell character, like you're a character in health, like uh, physical health, characterhealth.com. All right, well, Steve and Megan Schneibner, we thank you so much for your ministry and sharing your story with us here at the CHEO Convention. It's a pleasure. Great. All right, that's going to do it here for us. We're going to send it back to you, Mark and Andy. Thanks, guys. Hopefully you have a safe trip back to West Central Ohio and return to studio next week. Well, last week we had a chance to hear from Chuck Burling, missionary to Southeast Asia. 16 years ago, Chuck said yes to God, moved halfway around the world, and since then has story after story of how God has provided and continues to provide. Listen now as he shares how God has shaped and molded his life through that obedience. Perhaps it will resonate with something you are facing right now. In our flesh, we can't do it, but so many people try. It's, it's not going to happen by your strength. It's going to happen by the Holy Spirit, and it's going to happen by the strength of, of Jesus Christ. So the first thing I would say is, truly, you must give your whole self to him. Not holding back anything. In any corner of your thinking, in any corner of your life, in any corner of your ways, you have to convert to Jesus Christ. As his word says, if you love me, you will deny yourself and pick up my cross and follow me. It doesn't say when you feel like it, and it doesn't say how you feel like doing it. He has specific ways that we're supposed to live, and he has a purpose for each person. That purpose does not get fulfilled except through him. As it says in, the, in the Psalm 138, verse 8, it says, He will fulfill his purpose in you. We don't live to ask God to bless what we decide to do. We live to know what we're to do, and God will bless it. Finally, let's just jump back to your ministry quickly, and can you share with our viewers the best ways that we can be an assistance for you, whether it's through prayer, through finances? Tell us how we can be a blessing to, to you as you continue to go out and do what God's called you to do. There's always need. Uh, we work in the garbage dump and in a, in a big slum, and, and we're stretched throughout the country of Thailand and in three other countries. Uh, to do training and to monitor ministries that we have planted. Uh, our needs are really basic. They're really, really very, very simple. Um, one of them is kind of big. We need a sidewalk truck, a sidewalk Sunday school truck where the side will fold down and we've got our, our screen on there, we've got our, our speakers, we've got our puppet stage, we've got everything on that truck. So we need that, that's a need. Uh, when that's going to come, I'm prepared to wait until that time. Uh, but we also do need prayer. And, and we, do, we do a lot of giving. That's our whole ministry. Children don't give, okay? They don't support this ministry with finances. And so we've always got to depend on the people who God puts on their heart to help us. And it's not everybody and it's not all the time. But from time to time we do these huge programs where we give a bag of rice, five pound bag of rice, to every child who comes to kids church. And that gets expensive. Sometimes we do a sundry package with a towel and a toothbrush and soap and, uh, and a washcloth and, and things like that. But those are, those are once in a while kind of things. When we need that, though, I would like to know that there are people who hear this today that will say, 
All we need to know is when they need it, and we'll be there for them. To learn more about Chuck's ministry, Metro Southeast Asia, Inc., you can find it on Facebook to send a donation. Mail it to P.O. Box 1, Vaughnsville, Ohio, 45893. Well, part of Chuck's ministry is to the children who live in the garbage slums, and it's inspiring to hear him talk about the way that he is seeing these kids find new hope. And in some ways, it's through simple things like personal hygiene and better health. The Bible, of course, speaks regularly about the importance of our health, physical, spiritual, and emotional. And local op optometrist Dr. Daryl Groman agrees that physical health is a key to an overall healthy quality of life. Dr. Groman back to talk more with important keys to proper visual health with Nancy. Well, hello everyone, and uh, we recently spoke with Dr. Daryl Groman, who is an optometrist in the village of Pandora, and we have him back because there's so much more that we want to talk about. And uh, specifically, um, Dr. Groman, we'd like to ask you about your your mission trips and your work with children, because as you had talked about um, in our prior interview, there is so much that goes undetected. Um, whether it is ignored or just unknown about a child's eyes and how he can he or she performs in school or on the soccer field, you know, in life in general. Vision is a key process to, to gain the most information in the least amount of time. Mm -hmm. If we try to figure out what's all here in the studio with one sense at a time, uh, if you try to taste everything, smell everything, hear everything, touch everything, you gain the most information the least amount of time um, by using your vision and, and seeing. Right. Uh, but because we have two eyes, the two eyes are not necessarily working together in tandem. And uh, what I've seen around the world and in prison and in Pandora is that when people do see better, they perform a lot better and, and are much more pleasant and productive. I sir, it seems like it makes so much sense and why we don't pay more attention as educators or you know parents I don't know but um, even as you said how you sit at a table or at a school desk might impact it and I want to know how our, ch our children's eyes are affected by computer screens video games are you seeing any effect of course the the classroom is not really conducive to learn Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that you're probably too young to remember and recall that school desks were formerly oh, sure. made with a slant. Yep. That slant was there for a purpose. And if I would hand you a card to hold, you would hold it at about 30 degrees. Yes. Nobody holds it at zero. And That's... if you would go into our classrooms today from preschool through college, you'll find everybody doing their work on a flat desk. True. And most school textbooks have glossy uh, magazine uh, uh, quality that's very reflective True. from overhead lighting and when it's on a flat desk and the individual can't necessarily raise the desk they lean forward and they crunch up their stomach and it's a lot harder to breathe if they're working on a slant and I prescribe a slant board all the time that, that I prescribe the best desk for the classroom to use in the classroom and to use at home when they're doing their homework if they sit up straighter and taller, more like the Eiffel Tower than the Leaning Tower of Pisa, if that student is a two-eyed person, if they're leaning like this, or leaning like this, or leaning like this, <laughs> yes. it's not easy to, to yes. do their schoolwork. And so they get frustrated and angry, and, and, and uh, parents have an idea that they're quite rebellious. But uh, there's no instruction except by choir directors and, and band directors to have the students sit up straighter and taller. When you sit up straighter and taller, you open up the breathing cage, you get more oxygen in the brain, you think better. Okay, I'm and you sitting have up taller now. And you have much better handwriting when you're working on a slant. That's very true. And then if you have the best lenses at near, and it's not unusual for kids, people younger than 40 years old, uh, to be wearing bifocal contact lenses or bifocal in glasses, if they see better, mm -hmm. they're going to be much more productive and pleasant. Absolutely. I work with the Area Agency on Aging as well, and fall risks are um, receiving a lot of attention now, and a lot of it is because um, older adults don't take care of their eyes either as, right. as well. And so, you know, that 
opens up a whole other can of worms when it comes to um, you know health risks involved. So it's just it is really something that I think a majority of us probably take for granted every day until we have a problem. But a lot of times, uh, and with all due respects, vision and visual skills are not thought about. And right. so it's not unusual, and I'm thinking specifically of a mother who was in anguish and tears saying that her daughter's first grade teacher didn't know what to do with her. Right. And I said, Mom, thanks for bringing her in, because when when I can help your daughter to see better, to sit up straighter and taller, she's going to be a lot more productive and much more pleasant. Definitely. Well, let's talk about then, um, we don't have a lot of time, but your mission trips, because I, I often think about that as well, these, these people that have no access to, to vision care wouldn't even know where to begin to find help. Um, glasses are not available around the world, and earlier you said that you're wearing contact lenses, that you're legally blind. Uh, actually, you're functionally blind when you don't have contacts or glasses. Okay. You're only legally blind if you wear your best glasses or contact lenses and then have difficulty seeing the large E on the chart. I gotcha. Okay. And so the, the main cause of blindness around the world and functional blindness around the world is not due to eye disease, cataracts, glaucoma, retinal problems, retinal detachments, but actually not having access to the best lenses to help them to see the best. So right. over half of those kids that are in blind schools around the world would not be in the blind schools around the world if they had the best glasses. They would no longer be functionally blind. They would they would have good vision if they had the best lenses to see. And, and having an opportunity in Africa and Tanzania, uh, the barber uh, stopped cutting hair because he couldn't uh, see to cut hair anymore. Right. And I helped him with the best lenses for near, and he could see his um, wrinkles and his um, <laughs> fingerprints, and he knew he could go back to work. And uh, I had a, an uncle who's since passed away that was a barber in Lima for uh, 38 years or so, and, and I think about him from time to time, and this fellow in Tanzania, Africa, that he could go back to work and yes. make money for himself and his family. It's his livelihood, absolutely. Well, Dr. Daryl Groman, thank you very much for being with us, um, and congratulations again. You are among the top 100 notable alumni at the Ohio State University College of Optometry, and we want to thank you for your work locally as well as overseas, so thanks so much. For Thank all you, you do. very much. All right. Don't forget this and all the other stories you see on Faith and Friends can be found online at WTLW.com. Just click on Faith and Friends and you'll find the individual videos, a lot of valuable information from Dr. Groman. Before we go, just a few important reminders. The Legends of Ohio event is coming up on July 13th. It's sponsored by the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And Andy, you've been working hard on this project and it sounds like it's going to be a, just a fantastic evening. I'm really excited to see the high school athletes interacting with these guys that have gone on to college careers, some in the pros right now. We have four NFL guys that are currently playing National Football League in, in the National Football League coming. So just to see that interaction, to see you know how these guys that have done so much have walked these same streets in Lima or Parkway or Elida are going to relate to, to guys that are hoping for the very best. It's going to be a very encouraging night. Of course, if you want more information, you can contact Andy through his FCA email, and you can also buy the tickets online at itickets.com. That's right, just search Lima. Well, here at TV44, it's auction time. Take a look at this juicer that was donated last week. It is called an Icon Juice Fountain. 900 watt, five speed motor. <laughs> it's got that slick industrial look. I think, I understand you can put an entire apple in the thing and you get a half a cup of juice or something immediately. Uh, that's what Jennifer claims. I don't know how she knows this stuff. The seeds just disappear magically. The core, as if there was no core. But in reality, we cannot conduct this auction without items like this coming through our doors. And so we hope to hear from you soon. We need vehicles that are always a fun thing to be auctioned off. Nice little pack of people surround that. So if you know of anyone with a quality vehicle that'd be willing to donate it, that'd be a huge blessing. And lots of other items. So just stop on by the Beatty Roads Studios 1844, and you will be a blessing to us. Before we go, let's take one more look at the verse of the week. It comes from Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing, but it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We know that many of you have had a tough first half of 2014, and we want to remind you that 
God is still here, right by you, ready and willing to carry you along the way. If that's you, we want to take a moment right now and, and pray for you. We certainly do. Father, we lift up those who are struggling right now. They have looked back at the first half of the year and just don't know how they made it to this point and how they're going to continue to get through, whether it's through family loss or job loss or relationship loss or just not feeling connected or close to you or a church body. Lord, we lift them up and pray that you would meet them right where they're at right now. Let them know that you still have a perfect plan for their lives and that you're ready to carry them through to this next season in life. We thank you for seasons that we can get through and we can look on to brighter things to come through your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter what happened the first half of this year. Every day is a new day with Jesus Christ. That wraps it up for us this week on Faith and Friends. See you next week. Until then, enjoy this first week of July. Mm -hmm.